Hello, 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 everybody. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching live again. So today is not my first live already. Uh. Those who are still watching, thank you very much. And those who have been watching, hello, you'll hello, be everybody. Hello. Yeah. My my own live is at the back. Good evening. Hi, Thanks everybody. Moment, uh. Thanks for watching live again. So lesson number one today, number one sharing, uh, when you're doing live, uh, your own live, if you're watching, uh, please mute. Uh, you've not got to be kid. So those who have been watching me, you will realize I've been growing these few weeks. What well, I've been growing, my hair getting higher and higher. Uh, the screen cannot contain my hair already. So very soon, uh, our bubble opening already. So first thing, thank you very much. Thank you for coming. First, very good news today. Uh, welcome to Ask the Right Person episode 5. Today episode 5 already. Uh, and today our guest is very super, very champion. Uh. I'll share more with you all. Today the topic, buy low, sell high. Does it still apply during circuit breaker? Meanwhile, can I check? Everybody can hear me. Can everybody hear me? If you can hear me, give some love and like or some comment can. Love and like guys. Can you hear me? I check audio first, check audio. Test, test, test. Can I uh, can hear? Uh. Hi, yo yo. Hi, Elizabeth. So, first thing I love about life is I say hi to everybody. Hi, Derek. Hi, James. Hi, Clement. Hi, Danny. Hi, Sebastian. Hello, Paul. Hey, Paul, your magic awesome. Uh. Hello, Clement. Hi, Cynthia. Lake One. Hello, Lake One. Okay, I carry on. Uh. So today's topic is buy low, sell high, guys. Everybody throughout history uh, want to buy low and sell high. So today, the very esteemed Mr. Lim Yong Hock, our Pronex KO, will cover that it still apply during circuit breaker. He will share everything. So first thing, again, I will thank everybody for the overwhelming spot. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Especially all the my guests uh, take time to come to my show. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Arigato. So I'll share one quick one, uh, guys. One quick one. Uh. Da, 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 da. Wait, uh. Next week, next week, uh, Tuesday, I got a very special guest also. Uh, his name is Max. Max. Wait, uh. His name is Max Key. He's the owner of what they call it? Lianhua Seafood. If you all know him, he's going to go live at 10 o'clock. Uh. Oh, sorry, not today. They go live and sell seafood one. Uh. So they are the best in Facebook Live. Uh. He's been featured in Channel News Asia. He's been uh, featured in Straits Times. Sharing on how to do Facebook Live on coming Tuesday. Coming Tuesday at 7.30. Huh? Coming Tuesday at 7.30. Then, uh, 7.30, he's sharing on Facebook Live. Then, more importantly, next one, one moment. Uh, following uh, straight away at 9 o'clock, uh, I got one very special guest, a very good friend of mine, Miss Lin Gaw. So Tuesday got two very good sharing, guys. 7.30 is by Lian Huat, Mr. Max Key. Very honored to have him. Uh. 9 o'clock is by a very good friend of mine, Miss Lin Gaw. She's a top closer in Prodnex. So she closed over 750 units. And she'll share with you the 7 RS framework. How to help you, your even uh, regardless of your agent or your consumer, how you select your investment unit. Regardless, is a good time or a bad time. So very, very systematic. This framework is so useful. Uh, a lot of people are adopting it. So please value it yourself. This second opinion, 7R framework. Coming Tuesday, uh, two live, uh, guys. Please turn up. I'll see you guys. Uh. So once again, welcome to episode five. Today, our special guest is Mr. Lim Yong Hock. He's now at the backstage, uh, guys. If you can hear me. Do me a favor, say hi, hi, hi. He can see you one. Hello, Christine. Say hi, hi, hi. Uh. Once later, I invite him. Uh, I travel everybody. Say hi, 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 hi. He can see your comment one. So must be very friendly. Uh. He's really, really investing in, in his time here to share with all of us here. Thank you. So without further ado, I will bring him on stage. He's at uh, backstage now. Uh. Yonghua, are you ready? Can I see some? Hi, hi. Now, can I hear you? Yonghua, you must say, 点头一下. Can I? Okay. I'll bring your heart on board. Hello, your heart. Hello, your heart. 
Hi, hi everybody. Everybody hear Yong Hop. Can everybody hear Yong Hop? Yeah. Everybody can hear me? Can yeah, get yeah, a lot of comments. Yong Hop can see the comments also. Like. Today yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm that. looking at the comment. Uh, yes. Tammy, yeah, Tammy. Tammy today wow. uh, close the unit at MOR. Uh, Marina 1. Uh. Shermin is here. Christine is here. Mm. Wendy Yong is here. Mm. So today is very uh, reactive one, uh, guys. Your Hawk will, will actually address all the comments question at the end of the live. If you want to do anything, you want to say hi to everybody first, introduce yourself. Hi, Same everybody. Name. Okay, first time I'm on this live. Yesterday night, I was watching Jack New and uh, some other people. <laughs> and, and, and now, <laughs> now I'm, here I am. Yeah, here I am. I'm doing live also. So, so uh, yep, uh, kind of interesting, huh? Uh, mm, and also, right. those who are on live now if you can maybe you can share with more of your friends ask them to come and then uh, i i can share some info with you some slides with you so that maybe these slides if any one of you uh want to use to talk to customers or what you can also uh use them or maybe even uh some of my facebook friends uh, i know many of them are last time my fans on my radio radio program so if, if you are live uh yeah stay tuned and ask more of your friends to come in just like and share guys just like and share the first thing once you like and share please go to the description there's a welcome gift for consumer and for agent as well and so your home yeah. today will touch on three questions your home, are you ready we will start to go into the topic already sure sure no problem. No okay problem. we're going to question one today uh now yeah. is uh, everybody know we're in the circuit breaker, COVID nineteen, but it's improving uh. So we already got some good news ready. So your hope will touch on the common concern uh, of upgraders or investors. So question number one uh, uh, this is very common. Every time I hear one, I'm sure your hope always hear people ask one. This one uh, yeah, I want to wait for a bigger price drop uh, in private property uh, then I enter the market. So in short, a lot of people want to kill Julian. Uh. Wow, good deal, fire sale, fire sale, fire sale. So you know, okay, would you like to address this question? This one, I always hear one. <laughs> okay, actually, uh, I'm not too sure whether all of us, uh, after this uh, one month of this uh, circuit breaker, does every one of us actually do some research on some of the past uh, historical information as well as uh, what happened in the past okay I mean if you were to do some research you probably will find some answers and you probably see some patterns okay in fact uh, over the last one month I've been uh, spending a lot of time even talking to people uh, our people locally as well as uh, conducting a lot of training for overseas people okay and, and and we have so many events going on I think a lot of us are, are probably already more or less know some of these things I, I really hope that every one of you can go and share this information. But one of the common questions that I, I, I encounter uh, even locally and, and even to other parts of the uh, Southeast Asia, people are always asking. Uh, they are waiting for some good package after the COVID-19. Or maybe they are waiting for some package, hopefully after the circuit breaker. Uh, so this is exactly what was the question that was being raised uh. okay maybe uh i like to just share one screen so that maybe every one of you can see this uh. okay can i drop the screen uh, can i can, can okay so, here you go ah uh, can you see the screen can loud and clear very clear uh, is, COVID -19, is covid 19 fearful uh, uh, zhuang, fei yan ke bu ke pa. okay so this is always a question that i like to ask people Right, is COVID nineteen fearful or not? Because um, sometimes we we when things happen, then we we tends to uh, react right a fair bit during the situation, but we may have forgotten what happened in the past. Okay, maybe I just share of what happened in the past. Uh. Now, past facts of past pandemic, okay, or epidemic, right? Uh, has Singapore done well as a nation uh, over the years? Okay, so if you were to look at the past historically, uh, these are some of the very uh, serious pandemic that took place uh, over the years. Of course, some of them are, are smaller scales. 
All right, example, den dengue fever is actually on a smaller scale basis. But dengue fever is actually many parts of the world also have. All right, now, then we know which are the year. Now we know COVID-19 obviously started in November, December 2019. Then lasted until now. And it's still ongoing. But many other things uh, probably we have forgotten. All right, for example, the SARS, MERS, H1N1, Ebola, right? Even long, long time ago, Hong Kong flu. All these people could have forgotten uh, when it took place and what happened during uh, those days. Okay, so these are the years that this pandemic or epidemic actually took place. Right back in 1968, okay, Hong Kong flu was one of the very worst uh, pandemic that took place in 1968. Uh, in fact, 1968, I haven't even born yet. Probably not many of you were born yet. Okay. Uh, so therefore, in fact, when I look at this, uh, uh, it, it actually has some pattern. Okay, has some pattern. In a short while, I'll show you what is the pattern. Okay, now, what is the death toll of all this pandemic over the years? In fact, today, if you say COVID-19 is uh, very bad, yes, it has actually taken uh, more than 240,000 people's life, right? But if you look at the past pandemic, in fact, in 1968, okay, the Hong Kong flu it killed more than a million people. Game okay, killed more than a million people, right? And then you can see the next one, which is also in a very high death toll, is during 2009. So in fact, you, you look at this, it seems like there is a pattern. Uh, maybe Mother Nature has a way to, to so-called... Uh, uh, introduce new virus to us, right? 2009, 2019, it seems like it's an every 10 year kind of thing. So if you look at the death toll in 2019, in fact, there was a range, I believe they didn't uh, capture it correctly, but this information just for info is actually from Wikipedia, okay? And in fact, it can show up to 573,000 death toll. Now then some of you will be asking, hey, Yong Hock, you're here to talk about property or you're here to talk about COVID-19. Okay, now why do I want to show this is because the next slide explains itself. Huh? Now, this is a Singapore property cycle, right? Uh, I mean, in, in case some of you may not know me, I've been in the business for over 26 years. I started off in 1994, okay? More than half my lifetime, I'm dealing with property and nothing else but property, okay? This is my first job and my also my last job, like, if you ask me. So I've actually seen it. Uh, over the years, what happened during the various crises? Okay, if you look at this graph, uh, 1996 was actually uh, during uh, a very high peak season back in the 90s. Okay, those days, there wasn't much of a regulations. Okay, and there was a lot of uh, crazy buying, especially when uh, 1997, before Hong Kong returned back to China, many people actually rushed over to Singapore to buy. Okay, so actually the property prices shoot up okay, in the 90s. Uh, very high high shoot up as you can see from the graph. But I don't want to go back to too much of a history. But if you look at the last two times when an uh, epidemic or a pandemic took place in 2003 during the SARS and 2009, which is the H1N1. During these two timeline or these two time frame, actually you can see the market was actually at its lowest. Now, then here we go. Did the pandemic or the epidemic cause the market to go down so low? Okay, the answer is no. What happened in 2009 was due to the Lehman Brothers crisis that took place from 2008 to 2009. Okay, and during, during the 2003, it was not SARS that crashed the market. It was not SARS that uh, caused the market to drop to that level, okay? It was due to many, many uh, Asia financial crises, the, the world financial crisis, and you, if you can remember back then, uh, 2001 was terrorist. Then after that, followed by so many other things, okay? In fact, the world actually took a, took a deep due to what? Financial crisis, and it's not due to all this pandemic uh, crisis. Now, but then what happened, like in the case of 2003, you can see that actually the market remains very flat. Okay, remains very flat. In other words, 
during a pandemic or during an epidemic, okay, during this kind of uh, uh, period, many people will adopt this, what we call the wait and see attitude. Okay, so now the situation we have to see, are we even going into a situation whereby things is, is going to crash? Are people able to hold on to their properties? Now, time will crash is when people start to what? Throw out their property and they sell it at a, a, a very huge discounted price. Now, then we have to look at the situation. Is the situation going into that extent? Okay, my, my, my analyst here is this. Number one, interest rate is now all time lowest, all time lowest. So therefore, I don't think uh, the people who are holding on to a property will actually end up uh, have to sell off their property at a uh, much discounted price. I think with the low interest rate, many people should be able to hold up for a period of time. Okay, this is one uh, uh, consideration that all of us all the people out there who are looking for, a, uh, I would say, discounted buyer may want to actually uh, think through. Okay, as long as people got holding power, then I think that uh, this price, the the price war or the price crash, uh, is not likely to happen. Okay. Now, second point here is this: I think uh, we have to really uh, thank the policymakers who have actually introduced ever since two zero one three. Okay. Uh, if you all, some of you can remember, actually we went through how many rounds of cooling measures. Okay, Singapore property market is no longer a market where people can speculate, where people can actually buy today, sell tomorrow. There are a lot of factors that is already, uh, I would say, taken care of. Okay, first of all, uh, when the government introduced TDSR, it does not allow people to over borrow. Okay, and second of all, it does not allow people to speculate. Okay, and therefore, our fundamentals of our real estate market is actually very strong. So if you ask me, now, if you are looking for a good buy, I can only say one thing, right? This is the time, okay? And especially now, if you look at some of the things that is happening. Now, why our numbers are huge? Our numbers of COVID-19 is actually big. It's not because of uh, uh, or other part of the world don't have this number. It's because we have the courage. That's why I asked the question, did our Singapore government do well in this handling of the COVID-19? In fact, we have the courage to go and uh, test more people every day to test and test and test to make sure that whoever gets it good, we want to identify them. Okay, But I believe many parts of the world who may not have that number on a daily basis does not mean uh, they don't have this, I would say, uh, cases. Probably is just not being tested. So now the thing is, is look at our the, the biggest cluster, the dormitories. Okay, moving forward, what's going to happen? They're going to move them into a better facility kind of dormitory. In other words, the cost of employing all these uh, foreign workers, right? The cost of employing them is going to go up. Why? Because the cost of housing them is also going to go up. And if all these costs start to go up, there's they, they cannot come to a point whereby the developer or the employees uh, or, or the, rather the employers who employ these workers to build houses, uh, they are going to reduce their price. Because if they reduce their price for selling their houses, then they cannot afford to actually have these, uh, 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 these uh, foreign workers to build houses for us also. So therefore, I think many, many things we have to take into consideration. Okay, so that's why I say, if you ask me, I always ask people, if you look at this chart, if you have a time machine, if you want to travel back in time, when do you think is the time that you will go back to buy a property? Okay, every time I ask people this question, people were likely to tell me, oh, I think I'll go back to 2009 or 2003. Of course, uh, the, 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 the ones more extreme ones, they say, oh, no, I'll go back to 1990. Okay, <laughs> Obviously, you look at the, the timeline, I mean, if now given a chance, Okay, now given a chance, the time has actually, uh, I would say, uh, stabilized and, and, and the prices are actually very stable, right? Therefore, I, I think to, to expect a drop, um, not a high chance, if you ask me. Yeah. Ken, back to you. Okay. So that was question one, I guess. Question one, let me flash the question again. Uh. A lot of people is waiting for a big price drop. Uh. So 
you all already say very clearly, uh, big price drop, boy la. Now already so much cooling measure, cushion, everything already. If you all can see the chart, uh, very clearly one, uh, this is all from data. No emotion, uh, not opinion. So you all has covered it so clearly already. So you all remove the screen, uh, can I? Right? Can you move the screen? Uh, so you all have it so clearly already. You want to wait for price drop, uh, maybe in the resale market. Uh, new launch, unlikely lah. Uh, Unlikely lah, due to all data, data uh, that Yonghoi has covered. And also one point, uh, all my speakers that I, I invited, hey, Yonghoi, this one very good. Eh? Dormitory workers are now all still already. Eh? Mm. Yeah, standard of living must go up. Oh. Then yeah. the cost, who bear? <laughs> so that's why there's a, there's a Chinese saying I always say, no. Uh, yang mao chu zai yang shen shang. Uh, right. English has to translate it, English has to translate it. The ship, <laughs> the fur from the ship comes from the ship. Uh, the, the, fur, the fur comes from the ship. Uh, uh, so you, you, uh, you need to spend more money to feed the ship, okay, uh, in order to get the fur, naturally the price of the fur will go up. Mm. Yeah. So if all the dormitory workers, all construction workers, uh, the cost of housing them go up, uh, the standard of living go up, uh, our condo, all this, even HDB, la, prices cannot go down. Yo, cost costs already go up already. Yep, yep. Oh, then second question, uh, then red, red flow one. Uh, people yep. say, hey, then HDB pri condo price never drop. Uh. Then question number two. Uh, okay, lor. then my question number two. Then my HDB price can go up. Uh. <laughs> so Very good. Go up, uh. Then I yeah. match, match. Then, then that time I sell, that time I, I, I match, match. Yeah. You know, every, every time, time I... Any HDB dollar ask me this question, uh, I will tell them, uh, okay, you better listen to me. Otherwise, uh, you don't regret. Okay. But you see, I, I, when I talk about HDB, I want to put things in perspective first. Okay. First of all, I, I don't want to talk about people who really, um, in terms of financial, they are not so loose or rather they, they really, uh, they, I mean, their income and their, their living standard is actually not as, uh, not as uh, high profile. Uh, as uh, uh, some others, okay. So I want to to set this perspective correct first, okay. Uh, if you if your income is not strong and you, if your your expenses all this and your family background everything, you 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 don't have this means, then please work within your means, okay. I, I don't want to say that oh it's no good or what. No matter what, you still have a roof over your head. But the question will be this: Will this roof over your head be an asset or a liability, okay? Whether you are high income earner or low income earner, there will come a time that you really have to make a decision. Okay, I, I before I answer that question, I just give you all tell you all one story. This story is about my father and mother in law. Okay, which is what my my wife's parents are. Now my my father in law is uh, eighty years old. Okay, and my mother is uh, my mother in law is uh, seventy years old. So they are about ten years apart. So in 2015, when actually um, I bring the, the, the idea to them, okay, to say that, hey, uh, father, mother, you all stay in this flat now, so already. Have you ever considered to shift away and then get a new flat? They say, ah, no, la, no, la, I stay here. Ah. Because anyway, they stay there for almost 50 years. Ah. So uh, the actual place is actually Holland Drive. Okay, block 13. Now, if some of you can recall back, Block 13 was the lucky block. You know why lucky block? Because Holland Drive, there was a whole bunch of block that went and block. They okay. never block. They were just the last block <laughs> that didn't go and block. <laughs> so they were just beside the block that actually went and block. So they, they were hoping for an uh, uh, block and then uh, hoping that the price can go up. Okay, so in 2015, what happened is uh, that time I did a market check. The transactor price was about 480 to 500,000. Okay, for a three room flat. Huh? Now, then what happened was over the years, okay, 2015, 16, 17, 18. So I keep on bringing back the ideas to them. Then I say, hey, uh, father, mother, would you want to consider? You know, no point you hold on to an old flat. Seriously. Then finally, my father said, okay, my father-in-law says this. Oh, yeah, my flat, yeah, a lot of things spot. Yeah. I want to renovate this, that toilet also choke, la, this, la, leak, la, what, a lot of problem. Okay, finally, I convinced them. And in 2018, I actually bring them to what? To apply for a BTO flat. 
because I must consider their financial means because already in their eighties and uh, my father-in-law is retired and he's not working. He don't have income. So, so therefore I did a financial for them and I managed to shift them from their Holland three room to a Sembawang four room flat, brand new BTO. Okay. And, and the thing is this, the three room flat in Holland actually sold for 355,000 from 500,000 uh, in 2015, the price actually dropped down to 355,000 in 2018 in just three years. On paper, they lost 150,000. Can you imagine? Okay. But luckily, after they sell 355,000, they managed to buy a Sambawang four room BTO flat at 260,000. So after they pay off the whole flat, they still end up what, having some cash in hand. Right, to do some renovation and now they're happily staying in the four room Sambawang brand new four room flat okay with a market value of easily four hundred thousand okay so so in other words one why why i share this story here is this a lot of people say i want to upgrade to condo but my hdb prices has been falling okay i want to wait for hdb prices to increase to its peak then i upgrade now here's the here's the, the 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 very typical example. Imagine my father-in-law, mother-in-law is trying to upgrade to a condo, and then they keep on waiting and waiting, waiting. Now the true fact about HDB here is this: it's still a leasehold ninety-nine, okay. And as your HDB flat gets older and older, there can only be one possibility, okay. Your price will continue to depreciate, okay. Let me let me just show you another graph. Huh? So that you all can actually understand why HDB prices can actually be so challenging, okay? And 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 so why 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 is it that uh, prices are not going up? Okay, maybe I I can share my screen. Hey, lie, lie. Okay. Okay, you all got it. Can 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 see. Hmm. Okay, now basically, uh, HDB flats prices. Uh, the reason why the price has been uh, not going up is because number one. The government still wants it to maintain at the affordable range because 75 to 80 percent of people stays in a HDB flat. So therefore, they have to maintain the affordability of a HDB flat. Okay. Second reason is the government has a mortgage servicing ratio (MSR), okay, which actually don't allow people to borrow anything more than what they can actually afford okay so therefore in order to assess the loan of buying a hdb okay only 30 percent of their uh, uh income right can be used to service the loan in other words they if they if they control the amount of money that the person the buyer can borrow to buy a hdb flat okay how can it be possibly that the hdb flat prices to go up so fast okay so you ask me i would say this is not going to happen okay now if you look at the next slide yeah i have a, a, a few example another reason here is this when the government introduced bto flats okay the one of the basic fundamental is of course to provide another housing options for people as well as to make sure hdb flat remains affordable now you look at the the one in pongo okay here the 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 this over here yeah, if you can see my cursor uh, then you will probably see the the price for yeah. four room transmon the, the cursor need to change to a laser pointer okay hang on uh. laser pointer pointer option i must go to laser yeah, pointer. pointer okay good there there you are okay there. okay now if you can see these uh, four room flat uh, a transactor price in pongo is about 440 to 480 okay but the bto flat in the same vicinity is only going about two hundred and eighty-seven thousand, okay, to maybe about three hundred and twenty thousand. Now, if you include all the grant, in fact, a buyer only need to pay about two hundred and twenty-seven thousand there about, okay. So there you are. You have a BTO flat that is about three hundred thousand, and you got a resale flat in the same vicinity, which is another hundred and fifty thousand more. How can it possibly that the resale price continue to shoot up, okay, when you have a BTO price that will actually lure all the buyer to buy? So in other words, 
there will always be this uh, price difference. So people has an option. So when they want to buy a resale, they will think, think again. Should I pay the excess? Okay, if the resale prices were to go up too much, right? Then if the, the difference between the resale and the BTO, if it's too much, then I think when you go back to affordability, when you go back to loan amount, many buyers will end up buying BTO. They end up your resale will have a challenge if you want to sell at a higher price. Okay, so this is this is another example. Huh? Now, now, then I also show this to many people. This is an example of my father-in-law, mother-in-law. This was in 2012. Okay, Pongo Central, if you see Pongo Central 600 series. Huh? The prices was in the range of about 620, 630, 650 even. Okay, but what happened? The same location, uh, four years down the road, five years down the road, what happened? Okay, so in 2019, just last year alone, you look at the same location, the prices uh, from 650, 620, 630 now dropped to what? Dropped to about 420, 430. Okay, some even as low as 415. So technically speaking, if you look at it, five years, in just five years, six years, okay, the five room flight in Pongo itself has dropped from 650,000. Uh, to down to 415,000. So you can imagine if you look at this chart, uh, okay, if you are still holding on to your flat, right, it's going to be very challenging, okay, because now the, 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 the prices of uh, HDB is definitely under control and it's definitely going to remain affordable for many more first timer or even for some of the uh, lower income HDB dwellers. So we, we really, really have to uh, consider and think twice uh, whether uh, should we even want to hold on to a HDB. Okay, so therefore, come back to the question again. Uh, I want to upgrade to a condo. Now, I always tell people the difference between HDB market and private market, okay, it's just like HDB is a local market, private property is an international market. Okay, why I say that? Because HDB has its limitation in terms of who are the buyers. Only local Singaporeans, permanent residents can buy a HDB flat. Okay, where else condo? Okay, many people say condo prices will come down. Believe me, after this whole pandemic, Singapore becomes another safe haven, okay, for people to live in, okay? And people know all over the world, even with, despite the fact our numbers of the COVID-19 is so huge, but our death toll is actually very, very low. And the death toll is actually coming mostly from the elderly people. So from the world perspective, people, if now if you are living in China, US, any part of the world, I think after this whole pandemic, you only have one thing in mind. Do I want to find a place that I can go there and I can stay and I can be safe even in the period of time like this, I can be sure and certain that the government or the country still goes on and my life still goes on and the safety of my family is still taken care of. So that's the reason why I think I think this whole pandemic, this whole COVID-19 uh, has also placed us uh, in the world stage and, and let people see. So that's why I say private property is an uh, international market and with this international demand, I can only say that right, the private property prices uh, is really not in, in our imagination one. But the HDB price you can see from here, it will be under control and it will be only meant for Singaporeans or PRs who probably, I mean, have to remain affordable for them. Okay, Ken, back to you. Yeah, I think this, wow, this is all not uh, opinion. Uh. You already share everything. Uh. These are all data. And the Pongo one very scary. Eh. Guys, I, I minimize the text. I show you again. Uh. Five room flat, 2012, 2019. Uh. Drop how much? Uh? 235,000 eh. Six, seven years. Wow. Every year drop to the top 10 ah. Yeah. Yeah. 30, correct. Oh, every year drop 30,000 is scary eh. Yeah. Okay. Then correct. Once uh, question one and question two is covered ah. Uh. Let me keep the screen ah. Uh. Once yeah. question one and question two are covered. Yong Ho. See ah. Uh. Question one ah uh, guys. We recap question one. Uh, waiting for a private property price to drop. So you Yong covered property price. Private property price unlikely to drop lah from the graph, from data, everything. So number two, okay lah, private price don't drop. Then my HDB price can go up or not? 
Ayo, then we show the data, right? GPG press don't drop already. Toast out already. <laughs> you laugh to yourself already. So last thing, uh, last thing, all my clients, all my viewers will ask. Last thing, uh, guys. Question number three today. Okay, la, okay, la. Ken, I think you're right. I think your heart is right. La. Your heart is saying, already touched my heart. Hey, but now circuit breaker, uh, I don't sell Ken. Uh. I don't sell first. Uh. I don't buy first also. I wait for after circuit breaker. I wait, wait. After everything lifted, uh, I can go and get my bubble tea. Uh, I go and get my hair cut. Uh. I go and see show flat. I want to see the actual unit. Ah, I want to wait. Wait first, wait first. I'll observe a bit more. Lah. So this is a very common thing in your hop. Do you have any yeah. opinion on this? Yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, whenever the people ask me, uh, or rather tell me that they want to wait, uh, I always go back to a few basic fundamentals. Uh, then again, I want to tell a story. <laughs> <laughs> the story is good. Uh, you listen to the story. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. I'm like a storyteller. Like a storyteller. Okay, this story is about one of my close friends. Uh, okay, his name is Ah Hua. Uh, we, we call him Ah Hua Ah Hua. Uh, okay, then what happened was in back in 2008, okay, 2008, uh, 08, 09 that time. Okay, so he actually wanted to upgrade to uh, his, pro uh, his property. Okay, he was already staying in a condo, uh, uh, one condo. Okay, I don't mention which one now. Uh, so then he came across another one which is nearer to town. Then that time the one was asking for about eight hundred dollar per square foot. Okay, if you hear eight hundred dollar per square foot today, uh, well, you better what you better jump in and buy, uh, right now. Especially if it's near town. Okay, if it's near town and it's District Eleven, just to let you know. Okay, District Eleven. Okay, today District Eleven where I got eight hundred dollar per square foot right now. Huh? I think I close two eyes also, uh, easily thousand eight to two thousand, uh, easily, easily, ah, uh, okay. Not to mention some of the better ones. Okay, so what happened here is he asked me, hey, yo, ho, I saw this property eight hundred dollar per square foot. Do you think can buy? Uh? Okay, so that was in two zero zero eight, two zero zero nine. All right, then I say, so I analyzed with him. I spent a lot of time analyzing with him. I actually go through all the market research, everything. Finally, I say I convince him. Then he say, yeah. Sure not, uh, sure not. Then I say, yeah, it's, I mean, yeah, you see for yourself. Okay, then after that, you know what happened? He didn't buy. He didn't commit. Okay, he didn't commit. So he, he also, same thing. He said, I think I, because he has to sell his current property. So he said, maybe I wait for my car, the, after the, the, the situation, uh, then I sell all my current property. Okay, so that I can go and buy that property. Now, you know what happened? After the situation of the Lemon Brother crisis was over, yes, indeed, his price of his current property did went up a little bit. But the place that he wanted to buy, the price simply just shoot up. So for that year, the, the one year after that, he just simply kept quiet. He didn't even dare to ask me, hey, you know, do you think you should buy or can buy or not? He don't even dare to ask me the questions. So I know he didn't buy, like, and I also know he didn't sell. Okay. Finally, you know how many years later? Six years later. Okay, six years later. Then he finally saw another property. Okay. Then he said, hey, how, how uh, this one can buy? No? <laughs> and you know how much is that the other property that he's looking at? Okay. $1,300 per square foot. Then now he asked me, can buy or not? You know, now I don't want to go out to all the research already. I just simply go back to one simple fundamentals. I ask him, Ahua, you ask yourself, how many more six years do you have? Because I said six years ago, you asked me the same question. Did you make the decision or not? If you didn't make the decision, now, six years later, you ask me the same question. Okay, I ask you, Lord, by when then you want to move out from the current place and upgrade to a property that you love? I say, I think you better stay put. Lah. It's not that it's not that I, I try to reverse psychology him. No, it's not that. Because such a close friend, I just want to be very honest with him. But a lot of people, they say, I want to wait, I want to wait. I want to wait after this, I want to wait after that. Here's the thing. I mean, if you wait, 
It's not that you can't wait. But first question, number one, by waiting, you think the, the property that you want to buy will also wait for you? That's the first question. Eh? Okay. Yes, your current property may have gone up. May have gone up. Whether go up by how much, we don't know because it all boils down to what property you have. Fair enough. Uh, but if you truly want to upgrade or, or change property, then I think this is the time whereby you really have to ask yourself this one simple question. Okay. If you truly want to move, how many years more do you still want to wait and say, I, I think I wait after COVID, uh, I wait until circuit breaker, I wait until better price. Uh. Because not to forget, uh, your better price, the one that you want to buy will be better than better price. <laughs> at the end of the day, you may end up to pay a lot more right, than what you could be paying now. Okay, And sometimes, uh, a lot of people forgot that. Six years pass, eight years pass, you just waited, waited. Hey. Okay? Maybe the six years, seven years, very fast. Or maybe three years, four years, very fast over. But you know what are the impact that you can expect from having this weight? First, as you age, number one, who say you grow older, your income will go higher, right? Nobody can guarantee that. Number two, the amount of loan will be affected because why the number of years of loan will still drop, will drop, will drop, okay? And number three, today the interest rate is almost like the lowest of the lowest. A lot of people say Singapore money is cheap money. Uh, because why? You compare any part of the world, our interest rate is the lowest. Okay. So therefore, there are all these factors uh, right, that will impact us. Eh. So I always go back to how, how many years do we have to wait for so-called better things to happen. Yeah, better price to happen. But... By waiting, uh, you may even lose up many other opportunity. Okay, be it a loan opportunity, be, be it a low interest opportunity, or be it a good price opportunity. And guess what? The property that he wanted to buy from eight hundred dollars, he went up to one thousand eight hundred dollars. Yeah, and the property he wanted to sell, yes, it went up. But it actually went up by another two, three hundred dollars per square foot. Yeah, but too bad. Lah. I mean, these are things. So sometimes we when we want to say I want to hold on to my current property, yeah, one key, very important ingredient we have to ask ourselves. Our current property, when the market goes up, will it be at the forefront to drive the market? Or our property is actually at the back, right? Following what? the other better properties will be running right and the property that i want to buy after i sell is it ahead of me or ahead of my property if it's ahead of my property then i say well i better run to the one ahead rather than i you know i stick on to the one behind okay so these these are basic fundamentals of people who think that hey, i want to wait i want to wait okay we are no longer young huh, just for your information i'm 26 years in the business huh? Okay, but though I look young, but not that young already. Uh, I don't have much time. Uh, or in fact, I, I, I already passed my prime years of property investment. Because now my loan quantum is, is no longer compared to young people like you all know. See, because I, I can no longer get the maximum loan. Okay, I can no longer get, get, get the maximum loan. And, and the, the, the installment that I have to, to pay every month uh, is, is so much higher than many other people. So the prime, prime years of anybody who wants to upgrade to a property uh, is always in your late 20s or your early 30s. That's the prime, prime years. Okay, once you miss those years, uh, later part, you're going, to, you're going to see a lot more uh, impact on you. Okay, back to you, Ken. Hey, thank you very much. Thank you, Yohok. I think Yohok already covered. Wow, see, baby. You're very well covered. Uh. Because this uh, question, uh, not only myself, not only Yohok, I believe uh, today, today most of the people viewing uh, half uh, half is agent. Uh, this is if y'all got me this question, I'll say yes, 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 yes in the comment section. Everybody they know uh, now is recession. Oh, kill ma, kill Lulie ma. But wait a bit more lah. We can we observe, observe. People do that and do uh. People queue up then queue up uh. Nobody order bubble tea uh, when it's available. Then we're going to close then go and chong uh, standard. Uh. Yeah. 
then end up to fight. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Need counseling some more. Then need counseling some more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, why, that's why I always say that sometimes uh, when the when the time is uh appropriate for people to go in, then people start to think, hmm, nobody buy they don't know whether should I go and buy. Ask then your friend. When people, when uh, people go rush in, uh, wow, you go and fight with people. I mean, that's that's something quite interesting, like, I mean, this is a human psychology. We we always scared, like, scared that hey, did, did we make a wrong decision? I am. I only got a few couple of advice for people, like, huh? People who talk to me, they all know. Okay, don't bother about what people do. More important is go back to your own self. Okay, and today buying property in Singapore is not like a speculation. It's not like oh, you want to buy today, sell tomorrow, like those days. Huh? those days we don't need to sell house on it. Those days we only sell Q number, right? Can you you know um, in 1995 uh, straight away? Uh. Ah, in 1995 when one of the Orchard Road project was launched at more Park, uh, one Q number they can sell for two hundred uh, thousand. Uh, agent, uh, agent don't need to sell house one day. Eh. They just go there Q day for three nights, uh. If they can get the first Q number. Right, tomorrow they can just sell the queue number to the next person, right? Far, far behind, uh, who has the money to buy one, right? Just like one queue number, they can sell for two hundred thousand. <laughs> those were the days. Okay. Oh, scary! Can buy HDB already. Those days, they, 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 they don't have the current system where we use. Ah, uh, is balloting, balloting, ma. Those days, they are using the the queue system. First come, first serve. Uh, that's why that's why it caused this this problem. People are selling Q Q numbers. Though they don't get employed Bangla, all show flag going Q Q Q Q Q. You're right, uh, You see a lot of uh, foreign workers or even uh, uh domestic workers helpers. Uh, they are the one just sitting there help you know overnight no overnight. Then they just sleep overnight outside the show flat. No? But then can then I, like, uh, get show Bangla do it ah two hundred thousand ah put cannot he will he will he will go back to his country ah. Uh. <laughs> but, but, but but those days were, were a bit uh, uh so called crazy lah. Those days. Cowboy yeah. town, cowboy town. Yeah, cowboy town, cowboy town. You're right, you're right. Yeah. Mm. Thank you, Hawk. So question three is answered already. Uh, now it's the next segment, uh, guys. So we got about hundred over people watching. If you guys got any questions, uh, now is the time to raise it. Young Hawk can see the the comments. We will draw out for the comment section. Then Young Hawk can answer. But meanwhile, while you guys are typing, uh, I will remind everybody. Uh, if you are still watching, if you just join uh, the free gift is in the description in the in this post uh, for consumer and for agent uh, got free given uh, please like and share this video so everybody can benefit. Let me see uh. okay I got one standard question I let Yong Hawk see us uh. Yong Hawk wait uh. Uh, because now uh, um Pronex 2019 uh, we did a lot of consumer seminar right? yes so it grew into our mind already uh. Entry mm. press, entry press, entry press. Not about next to MRT, not about uh, developer. Entry price. So this question is uh, very common. E, you know, even products, uh, everybody, uh, entry press, entry press, entry press. Must be right, must be right, must be right. Mm. So they don't know what is a safe entry price. What is a safe entry price, Yong Hock? How do differentiate a safe entry price? Uh, Cannot actually, be safe. I, yeah, actually, Singapore is very fortunate. Okay, you know why it's very fortunate? Because why right, our data are very transparent. Okay, uh, uh, nothing, nothing is hidden. Everything is exposed. Okay, so even consumer agents, especially agents, now you have gone through a lot of our training and our consumer talk and a lot of statistics, a lot of uh, figures has all been dig up for you. So if you ask me entry price, okay, that is a simple, 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 simple logic. It's just a very direct comparison. Okay, and it's very logical one. It's very logical one because as long as you put two apples aside side by side and it all look exactly the same and it tastes exactly the same, and one is cheaper than the other, hey, it, this is no brainer. Like. This is no brainer already. Okay, I just I just give you a very typical example. The most recent this year, uh, 2020, uh, uh, the M. Okay, the M. When the developer knows that if they were to start off pricing it high or pricing it at the normal pricing of the market then people will start to think, uh, yeah, think and think and think okay 
uh, same thing like the 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 project launch before the uh, circuit breaker was uh, copper. Okay, why why is it that this copper or the M they have actually draw so many buyers and and they did so well? I mean, the M did about sixty percent, sixty over percent uh, on the first day. Why? Because at the end of the day, very simple. You place two apple together. You look at uh, the M. The price starting from two one something two 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 three. Then you look at the surrounding. Uh, even the resale one uh, are more expensive than these. Uh. So hey, really that uh, no logic on it. And that's the reason why the queue uh, was from why well, you got to make one U turn. Uh. And then <laughs> furthermore, I still remember the day. Uh, people still have to go and take temperature screening all this and go into the show fair. So that's why I say if you ask me entry price today, Singapore is very fortunate. Not like all other country. When I travel the other parts of the, 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 the Southeast Asia, when they do property launches, and in fact, when I was doing my training in Malaysia for my Malaysia team, I I'm I, I having a very difficult time to even find a simple graph of what we call price index. Okay, I cannot even find that price index because their, their price index got don't know how many multiple different, different ways of coming out with the price index. And we, we cannot even see clearly, hey, whether the price is it right or safe entry price or not, we don't know. We only know one thing, the price has crashed or the price has gone up. That's it. That's about it. And it's all based on market sentiment. But Singapore, I think it's very transparent. I mean, if consumer is involved or consumer is listening, I dare to say one thing. Like, if you go and listen to any of our consumer talk, the statistic we present to you, uh, that is a statistic that you can take to your bank and back in it. I mean, because we, we don't make up statistics on our own. These statistics are all very transparent. If you spend enough time sitting in front of the computer, go to Google, you probably can find them. Okay, that's why I say, I mean, today, developers are very price sensitive. They won't even want to consider to go and give you a high price. Why? Because they know market sentiment does not support high price. And Singapore, developer cannot con the cu customer to go and buy at the high price. And they can't, okay? They can't because why? Everything is transparent. Okay, so if you ask me, go and compare. Put two apple together. Wow. And if you want, one is this price, and the other one is much lower, and both is exactly the same, or maybe similar, but is they are both apple. Okay, then I think hey, that is the same entry price. Already. Mm. Okay. I think uh, the M was a very good example. Uh, the, the launch day, uh, wow, everybody see the video. Copper also did a video. Oh, a very long queue at eh, Copper. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Projects, your hope mentioned, uh, today, even during CB period, uh, circuit breaker period, still selling. Uh, still selling. If consumer is watching, it's still selling. Uh. Yeah, you see, that's why, in fact, uh, I just got a report from our site. Uh, in the last one month of the circuit breaker, uh, from Nets has sold okay, more than 65% of all the units sold in the entire market. Okay, the reason is very simple. The reason is very simple. I mean, uh, to all my prominent students out there, I'm proud of you, so proud of you that you are closing this much. Because in fact, we are we have been doing a lot of all this consumer education, okay, and showing a lot of all these uh, this, uh, uh, statistics to uh, show people. At the end of the day, we're not selling anything. Basically, we're just presenting facts, okay, and 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 di uh, di dissecting all the information so that you all can read it, not from just or oh, simply or oh, look at the number or what you look at it, uh, look look from different different perspective and then you understand. Okay, that's the reason why I think our closing rate is much higher than many and uh, uh, other other uh, joint marketing agency as well. Yeah. All the products same. I say thank you, Adi. Thanks for acknowledging our effort. Oh, can I share on Facebook? Yeah, thank good you. job. Well done, no, seriously, because really, uh, 65% and higher is really, really, and many of them are closing uh, remotely. No viewing, no show flat, no nothing. It's just like talking to a customer on the, uh, on the computer to Zoom or to whatever, Google Meet or whatever, and then they, they just present the facts and they can close the deal. I think this is really amazing. And My those people who take action right from the start, they are the one who will benefit the most one, believe me. It's just that the people who are the M or the copper who bought uh, right, right at the beginning, at the launch, right? Okay, they they, 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 they just suffer the uh, a few hours of the hot sun and queuing up, 
Okay, but at the end of the day, easily after the launch day, on paper, they already make a few hundred dollars per square foot. Okay, that's how it works. Simple. That's why I say those people say, I wait, I wait, I wait for the price to drop. Now, if you ask me price drop or not, put it this way. You ask yourself, do you want your salary to drop? Do you want your boss to cut your pay? Right? Do you want every other thing in your life Okay, to get cheaper, All right? If no, right? If no, uh, then I will only say everything will continue to go up. Okay. Hmm. This is very good logic. Very good logic. Can go back to the dormitory one also. Yeah. And you know, you can say the story again. You can say the You see, dormitory last time, uh, one bank don't know squeeze how many people, 10 people or something like that. I think moving forward, uh, one person to one bank. So in other words, uh, the space uh, is going to increase. The logistic, the expenses, the cost of living, everything will go up. And I got one story I like to tell every time during my consumer seminar, which is the chicken rice story. Okay? The chicken rice seller. If you can remember 20 years ago, 10 years, 20 years ago, how much is one plate of chicken rice? 50 cent, I think. Is it 50 cent? No, nah, nah, not so cheap, lah. Oh, okay. Not so cheap. Maybe two dollars ah, two dollars ah, reasonable okay. Today, can you find a chicken rice store selling two dollar chicken rice? I don't think so. Right, minimum three dollar, three fifty, four dollar kind of thing, correct or not? Because very simple. Then the question: is, Did the chicken change or not? <laughs> I mean, is it a new species of a chicken, or, or, or is it something? Is it, is no more chicken? It's still the same chicken, right? But how come the price then and now is so much difference? Now it's double, eh? it's double. Eh? Last time we can still buy 120, 150 during my days uh, in the 90s. Uh, all right? I still can buy uh, 150 chicken rice. But today, uh, don't have that. Eh? Today is 350 eh? minimum. Eh? Why? Because the guy who cut the chicken, uh, the Tao Chiu, uh, the guy who cut the chicken, uh, hey, he's been cutting for 10, 20 years. Uh, if the if his salary doesn't go up, you think he will continue cutting the chicken? I don't think so. Leh. Okay, leh, let's this is only the person cutting the chicken. How about the food that the chicken is being fed? The little corn uh, or the rice or uh, whatever, lah, uh, the, the food. You mean what that food uh, did it get cheaper? Now now chicken don't need to feed already. Uh, they all run wild and they just feed on on, on soy and, and, and mud. No what? Right. So all these are uh, all these are uh, when as long as all these small little ingredient goes up, okay, the eventual byproduct will never drop. Similarly, what does it cost to build a house? The soil, the cement, the worker behind, the the the, the machine behind, uh, all the water, everything behind, all the time behind, all this it has been going up. And as long as all this goes up, uh, it's the same story as chicken rice. Okay. A building, it's still the same building. But why is it more and more expensive? Simple. Uh, because the people behind it uh, to make this building possible, okay, the people behind the chicken that make the chicken rice possible, right, uh, has gone up. Everything has gone up. So if you ask me, there can never be a time where things will drop back to where it was. In fact, I, I witnessed myself. So many people have been telling me over the years, especially buyers, I think I would wait for a dry price, drop back, drop back, drop back. At the end of the day, they are the one who drop back. <laughs> oh, you know, I always say this word. Uh, I think everybody, uh, if you all miss, just summarize with this phrase. Uh, if you're looking for a good buy, you never take action. Uh. You know, what's up? What is after this? Huh? <laughs> If you're looking for a good buy, if you don't take action, uh, it's goodbye. Uh, goodbye. Uh, goodbye. Bye bye. Uh, it's bye bye. Uh, it's bye bye, really. Uh, don't look for a good buy. Uh, you just say bye bye, can you? Uh, mm. yeah. I think you all covered a lot today. We are very fortunate to have Yong Hock. Any more questions before we thank you, Yong Hock? If not, we can say thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks to Yong Hock. We can say thank you to Yong Hock, guys. Yeah, I, I'm more than happy if any one of you want to do this live show. Uh, but I think what is more important, I think. Today I'm so happy I got well now I got I see 142 people. Is it 142 people live? 
Yeah. Mm. I think, uh, like, I, I, I hope one day I'll be like uh, this, uh, uh, what you got? what's this guy's name? Uh, he got 60,000, what? Wang Lei. Uh? Hey, Wang Lei. He sing uh, Wang Lei. Hey, uh, Wang. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, don't want, don't want, don't want. I, I rather <laughs> think the property language. Okay. You see, I, I, I'm not here to sell anything. I just want to share uh, so that consumer can understand and then can go back and really make some sound decision all right especially the the the, the young ones uh, the young ones uh, okay must take the action right away uh. we don't have too many good years to to waste yep mm, i think oh uh, that's a very good conclusion by yong hock okay we have further ado we say thank you yong hock any last question no more ad. we say thank you thank you thank you Hey, you know, okay, thank, you, thank you, thank you, thank you, bye bye, bye bye. Okay, thank you. I will draw Yong Ho out from the main. Thank you, Yong Ho. Thank you, bye bye, bye bye, bye bye. Thank you, thank you. Okay, guys, Yong Ho has summarized the three questions very eloquently. I quick summarize, I quick summarize. I know you want to sleep already, ah. Uh. I know you're tired already. Number one, ah, uh, if you're waiting for private property price to shoot up, then enter market. Yong Ho covered. If you would wait for your HDB price to shoot up. Um, is it possible or not? Or oh, Yonghok cover it so eloquently already. Lastly, yeah. Lastly, everybody now circuit breaker. Right? You're waiting. A eh? now see from phone ah, virtually ah, no feel leh. no feel. I want to after circuit breaker. I don't can see again. I want to touch the show flat. So what's the cost? What's the opportunity cost involved? Ah, Yonghok already covered that as well. So. To end off, I want to uh, mention something. Next week, I got two more live uh, that's very important I want to share with you all. Firstly, this one. Tuesday evening, uh, guys. Tuesday evening. Uh, I'm sharing with uh, Lin Gaw. Um, she's very famous. She's very good. She uh, closed 750 units uh, with the 7R framework. Good for agents and good for consumers. Very easy to pick up one. Uh. She's really, really very good. Uh, it's on Tuesday, 9 p.m. Uh, to go through but before that i got one more life like that day uh he's a very special life i'm sure all of you know him he's actually none other than wait up, wait up. let me get get the flyer this one ah uh, mr max key uh, he's uh he's learning what seafood uh, guys my we order seafood from, my family order seafood from them man. every day um, uh, one day one week Monday to Saturday, Saturday, they will go live. So today they never live. Lah. That's why I live. Ma. At least I got audience. So he will go live every day. He sells seafood. One, eh? So he's so good at Facebook live. Ah. Now because of Yonghua, I got 100 over people watching. Without him, uh, without Yonghua, maybe lesser. But Max, uh, his viewer switch per day uh, is from 500 to 1000 plus. One, eh? He's that good. So if you, if you, aspiring to do facebook live we have the honor to invite him on tuesday 7 30. same thing on ask can say please like and share this page uh so that you guys can watch him he will actually share how to bring your business onto facebook live just with a phone only eh? he's very humble he's very willing to share so please uh benefit yourself during this uh circuit breaker uh like myself i step up I learned Facebook Live, and Max is really, really very humble, really, really very nice. He's willing to share with us. Lah. I hope I'll see you guys all uh, coming coming Tuesday, 7.30 uh, with Max. He will share how to run your business. No doubt, uh, selling seafood, no doubt, selling seafood, selling seafood, okay, selling seafood and selling property uh, is very different, uh, but essentially how to run a successful Facebook Live uh, campaign can um i will share upcoming next week i got a lot of live uh, uh lian huat uh, max i got lin go uh touching and i got um tammy on uh, marina one i got yo 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 are, are you in the live i got yo yo touching on just escape and evening in the weekend i got marcus Wah touching on copper so next week at least i got six more live I hope to see you guys. I thank you so much for watching. And before you leave, please claim the free gift in the description. Please claim the free gift uh, for consumers and for, for agents as well. 
Ken, thank you so much, guys. Before I leave, I want to say thank you, everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for watching. Good night to you. Have a good rest. I'll be turning off the live. Take care. See you guys. Good night. Bye-bye.